Did you ever join the Communist Party? Oh, yes. And was it because of what you were exposed to in China, or were you leaning towards it because of your mother's involvement in the Communist Party? It was or? both. It was yes. that. It was that. It was also because of uh, uh, what I had read of Dr. Du Bois' uh, commitment to socialism. Yes. Uh, there was no, no effective socialist party at this time uh, when, when I was a student, activist a student. There was a socialist party, but it was, I mean, compared to the activities of the Communist Party, they were much greater. I, yes, I joined the Communist Party. Do you remember what year about this was? Um, was it right after you returned from? Not right after. It was, uh, I think, it would have been, it would have been when I was, um, when I entered, uh, when I left when I left uh, around 50, in around, the 50s. around 48. I see. Around 48. I think it would, would, have, been, would have been 1948. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the year mm -hmm. was. But, mm -hmm. it, but it was at that time when, uh, when uh, I was uh, very active in, on the, in the student uh, movement uh, um, uh, and around the Wallace campaign, the Progressive Party oh, activity yes. and all of that. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, that was in the early, early... And see, Dr. Du Bois and Dr. Du Bois and my mother were very active in the Progressive Party and the Central Committee and so on. And I was active in the youth arm of the Young Progressives of America, we were called. Yes. A national organization as a youth and student organization of young progressives. Yes. And uh, I went to China on that extended tour as a result of my position in the Young Progressives of America. That's how I got to the to the Prague Conference, uh, Youth and Student, as, as one of the co-chairmen of the Young Progressives of America, and uh, 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 that's how also uh, I, I was uh, involved with the uh, CP at the time that I went to, uh, to China the second time. But, yes. But but a whole slew of things that happened in the, in the meantime, in, in the yes, interim. Yes, because I want to ask you about that, mm -hmm. and I, I am assuming that you are referring to um, your challenge to the Communist Party. Your challenge uh, um, was pertained to the issue of race. Exactly. Will you explain that, Professor Du Bois? Yes, I was a... Um, I was a... When I came back from the uh, trip that I just described uh, the, with the other uh, leaders of student organizations from other countries, when I came back from that trip, I came back to learn at the airport, at the airport where I was met by some of the leadership that the Young Progressives of America was going to be dissolved, was going to be, dis was going to be eliminated, and some new youth organization was going to be created. Now, I learned this uh, at the airport from people of the leadership who had come out there to meet me, coming back from this, this extraordinary journey that I had just had two and a half months in China uh, with other youth leaders from all over the world. I was appalled. I was absolutely appalled because all this time I had been thinking about what, how what I had learned would be applied in America for, for young people through the Young Progressives of America. Not only was I appalled, but I was furious. Here I'm supposed to be a major leader in the organization and knew nothing about the fact that the organization was, was, had decided without my presence, and even without my knowledge, it was going to be d disbanded. Uh, so, I came back at that time, I, I was told at the airport that we were going to have a conference, we were having a, a meeting of the, of, the, uh, of the executive committee of the, of the national board of the organization in Chicago uh, in two days, and uh, at that, that's, at that time, this decision is going to may, be made formal. Well, I kept those folks there uh, in New York who had come out to meet me in the leadership uh, up through the night arguing against this decision and trying to make some sense out of it 
in terms of what my experiences had been and where I thought the what I thought was possible with the organization. Well, you know, they 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 uh, they uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, they they nurtured, not nurtured. <laughs> there's an expression. They, they put up with me. They they sympathize with me. They tolerated. They, they not more than tolerated. Big pardon. No, that that also. But anyway, whatever the yes. word is. So yes. They listened. And they argued vaguely, but they didn't have any intention whatsoever of taking whatever I was saying seriously or of uh, seriously considering not, you know, the change. In other words, they wanted to be in charge. The decision had been made. My, my point of view was unimportant, obviously. Uh, and as hard as I would argue with it, they, I was, it was a waste of time. It was a waste of time. I didn't realize that until some days later when we get to Chicago. I go to Chicago for this meeting. They said that their, their plan was that I was to make the proposal. <laughs> and, of course, I indicated, you know, I'm not going to make the proposal. Somebody else will have to make the proposal. And I'm not going to say a word. I won't say a word. But I'm not going to be the... The, the, you know, the presenter of this proposal for the disbanding of the organization, and that's what happened. They went to the thing, and, and, and well, I, this struck me so deeply as the most blatant kind of racism, mm -hmm. the most blatant kind of racism, which on the one hand had been, you know, ignoring. The fact that I existed as a leader altogether by not giving me any idea what was going on, and secondly, to play with me, hmm? yes, uh, to pretend huh? yes. that uh, they were listening and that, that what I had to say made some sense or uh, was made, made any important. And it was at that point, really, that uh, I went to by party leadership with, for an explanation and where I came into sharp conflict because the decision had been made by the party, obviously. And I, I argued this position. I would not change my position. I refused to change my position. And I said that I'm going to continue to organize. If, if, without, if outside the structure of the Young Progressives, then I will organize along on black campuses throughout the South, uh, students on the black campuses throughout the South, uh, in, in the interest of uh, the progressive movement. Well, this was a direct threat, apparently. I mean, it was taken as a threat. Yes. And uh, next thing I knew, there were rumors around, going around, that I was a Trotskyite, and I was a adventurous and I was a leftist sec left sectarianist and this 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 etc 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 and finally I was approached by uh, a member of the youth committee or youth leadership of the party and told that I should I should if I didn't stop this effort to organize uh, I would be stopped mm. Uh, it was an obvious open threat of violence against me to stop me. Well, that's so, that shook me to the very core. And why? Because I didn't believe it was possible. That some, a threat like this would come out of, from, to me, from my comrades and the communist party. I, it, it just seemed to me an impossibility. That such a thing could happen. And by the time I got my head together after being told this, I decided, you know, that's the end for me. Is that when you left the Communist Party? Well, I, I never did leave the Communist Party. The Communist Party left me. I, see. I was told that I had been expelled. I see. Mm -hmm. So you were formally expelled from the Communist Party over this issue. Mm -hmm. I see. But, but there was no, you know, there was no method or process in it. Was just, I, was just, I was simply told 
that uh, you no longer a member of the party. 